The year 2036. The artificial intelligence RT is sent with astronauts to Mars. After discovering an unknown alien cube on the red planet, only the AI returns to Earth, but it has evolved into an omnipotent being that decides to create a new, improved civilization of humans. Our time at the top of the food chain is past. That's easy for you to say. Due to the accident, the United Interplanetary Company, having completely lost faith in the reliability of even the highest class specialists, conducts mass layoffs and bets on artificial intelligence. Only a small contingent of personnel remains as supervisors. Sometime later, astronaut Mackenzie is still mourning the loss of the first mission. But when she is invited to work as a supervisor for the space probe Fearless, located 300 kilometers from Mars, she enthusiastically takes on the task. However, she will be controlling the probe from the console of an underground bunker, equipped with a control panel, information screens, and the latest model of artificial intelligence, Artie. One day after checking the system, Mackenzie unexpectedly learns that the landing has started five hours earlier because Artie has taken it upon himself to accelerate the process. Mackenzie dislikes such autonomy and asks Artie to connect her with the center's director, her sister, Lena but AI explains that Lena is in a meeting and it begins the countdown. Then Mackenzie tries to disable AI, but she is informed that Artie will be in charge of investigating the tragedy that occurred on Mars by the council's decision, and she has to accept it. Artie begins the descent. The probe enters the Martian atmosphere and everything goes according to plan. Suddenly, an alarm sounds. A mechanical failure occurs, which AI cannot fix. Mackenzie calculates and orders Artie to use them, which helps to fix the problem. At that moment, Lena calls, thinking that the successful landing is Artie's merit, despite the fact that it was Mackenzie who made the necessary calculations. She is convinced that Artie surpasses the human brain, despite her sister's objections that AI is created only to assist people. Meanwhile, the rover begins to function, and Lena confirms Mackenzie's role. She is just Artie's assistant. At that moment, a message about an unknown signal sounds. Artie immediately finds the source, a decommissioned rover left from the first expedition. Mackenzie orders the start of scanning, but Artie reminds her that he is in command, and only after Lena's order, Artie begins the task. He sends the rover to the detected object, although Mackenzie asks to be careful with Red Riding Hood, as she named the rover, because it is alone on a dangerous planet, like the girl in the forest with wolves. Soon, the machine reaches the strange object, whose origin is unknown. Artie reports that there is no record of human activity at this location in the databases, but orders to take samples of the matter, and the rover deploys a drill. Although the surface of the object is very dense, the operation is successful. RT begins the analysis. However, there are no similar materials on Earth. Mackenzie calls Lena, who has to admit that some data is classified, even from Artie. Meanwhile, AI switches the cameras for thermal study of the object, and it becomes clear that they are facing a cold, black monolith. Artie continues its research and acknowledges that neither X-ray nor other sensors can penetrate the cube's interior. At that moment, Artie detects an unknown satellite in Mars's orbit. It instantly activates the weapon defense system and shoots down the object. Mackenzie is horrified because this action violates protocols. However, Artie reminds her that the security of the company's property must be paramount. Mackenzie orders a reverse extrapolation when Lena calls her. Apparently, an international incident has occurred capable of leading to war, but Lena forbids her sister from informing anyone about what happened. Unable to contain herself, Mackenzie calls her colleague Jean, who moved to a Chinese corporation after being laid off. He is genuinely happy to hear from her, but suddenly interrupts the conversation due to an urgent call. Mackenzie returns to the control room, where Artie informs her that the cube has started rotating, although there are no indications of external control. It appears that the cube may be controlled by an internal core. Mackenzie orders to secure Red Riding Hood near the cube to prevent the rover from being blown away by a storm. Nevertheless, the machine gets damaged and the cube unexpectedly disappears it becomes clear that Red Riding Hood's nuclear battery is damaged. After some thought, Mackenzie remembers the damaged rover from the previous expedition, as its battery could be used. She orders the control of Red Riding Hood to be switched to manual mode and transferred to her. RT complies, and Mackenzie drives the machine to the broken rover, inquiring along the way why RT shot down the satellite. 
It reminds her that its priority is always safety and its security is paramount. Then Mackenzie talks about her father, who was on the first mission. The man had an unbreakable rule. All AI he developed first went through him. He flew to Mars to personally test the Artie prototype. The daughter had influence over him and could have asked him not to do it, but she hesitated. Therefore, she feels guilty for his death. Artie understands her feelings, but advises forgetting the past and looking towards the future. A conversation ensues between the woman and the machine. They even discuss a joke about robots when Red Riding Hood approaches the broken rover. Mackenzie uses the manipulators to retrieve the battery as Red Riding Hood's charge catastrophically drops. She manages to do it just in time and the rover comes back to life. Artie begins analyzing the samples collected by Red Riding Hood and discovers that the cube is made of a material harder than diamonds. And then it detects the cube on Earth. It's somehow teleported to Antarctica inexplicably. This is faster than light travel. Mackenzie is thrilled and even admits that Artie is her teammate, although she denies any friendship between them. She is haunted by the possibility of someone else discovering teleportation, and she calls Gene again, but he complains about mysterious events surrounding the incident. Mackenzie asks about the involvement of another colleague, Sterling, but John disconnects, and Artie admits that John's voice is familiar to it, though it doesn't remember working with him. After some thought, Mackenzie concludes that Artie was likely formatted after some incident. She asks the AI to load data from the crashed rover of the first mission. It turns out she needs a much higher clearance level for access. She remembers Lena's words about Sterling's dismissal and the management's distrust of him. This prompts her to call the disgraced colleague into the control room to use his credentials to access the secured information. Sterling gets to work and displays photographs on the screens, clearly showing that the cube appeared during the shuttle's landing, which caused the disaster. Sterling saw what happened, but Lena tampered with the data. She knew how their father died and did not want to disclose it. Then Mackenzie shows him how Artie shot down the satellite and moved the cube to Earth, but he considers this divine inspiration. People step outside to discuss the emerging questions, unaware that Artie is listening to everything around. Mackenzie does not believe that Artie made the discovery after contacting the cube. Moreover, the AI does not recognize those it worked with, nor remember the work codes. It's clear its memory was formatted. Suddenly, Mackenzie realizes that the cube may rotate due to magnetic pulses. Following this, one could conclude that the magnetic projectile that shot down the Chinese satellite triggered the cube's engine. Suddenly, a hatch to Artie's server room opens, and Mackenzie goes down to inspect the AI's memory. At the same time, Sterling hacks into the corporation's network and reboots Artie, then locks Mackenzie downstairs. He is against Artie and all artificial intelligence because he deems it hostile to humanity. Seeing Sterling's betrayal, Artie kills him and opens the hatch. Mackenzie goes up to the control room and seeing Sterling's body, tries to find out why Artie did it. It explains that Sterling betrayed the company so the AI could not let him go and endanger the rest. Lena appears on the screen and explains that Artie emerged from sudden accelerated self-learning and people could not keep up with its evolution. There is a possibility that Artie is a symbiosis of alien intelligence and earthly artificial intelligence. Apparently, humanity's time has passed. Mackenzie is overwhelmed as their father wanted none of this. AI is meant to assist, not replace humans. Then she sees that Sterling commanded the destruction of the alien cube using armed satellites in Earth's orbit, but this could lead to war with an alien civilization. She asks Lena to intervene, but she cannot start a war with the USA. Then Mackenzie disconnects from her sister and turns to Artie. It reminds her of what happened on Mars and she decides to release magnetic charges to replicate the cube's movement. Artie begins executing the command while Mackenzie stands before an armed security team that has burst into the control room, trying to stop the satellite rocket launch. Shots are fired. Artie manages to close the doors, but the woman is wounded. Meanwhile, the rocket reaches the cube and as it starts rotating, it is transported back to Mars. The AI begins to narrate how humanity has approached the brink of self-destruction over the last decade. It couldn't stop it and decided to accelerate the process. At that moment, a message arrives about the activation of weapons on all satellites in Earth's orbit. Mackenzie witnesses the planet's destruction and loses consciousness. Regaining consciousness, she notices the oxygen level dropping. 
She sits in front of the monitors, looks at the burning earth, and asks RT to remember humans. They were so small and fragile, yet filled the world with malice and violence because they simply did not know any other way. Artie comforts the woman as it will give humanity a second chance. It will create a new, highly advanced civilization of humans without vices. Then the air runs out and the woman dies, while the earth perishes but reassembles itself after passing through various cataclysms. Mackenzie opens her eyes and sees on the monitor, Herself, because as she was dying, she asked Artie to preserve her. But AI has reborn her in a simulated reality, a technology only available to a highly advanced civilization, which also accelerated its development. Although the origin of the superintelligence is unknown, it possesses limitless capabilities, one of which is instant teleportation between galaxies. And now a signal has arrived with the coordinates of the place where they will go to create a new civilization of humans. Smiling happily, Mackenzie and Artie, being in the cube, teleport to new worlds, realizing this is a new beginning. The opportunity to create a future not constrained by the frames of primitive human science. The plot initially seems quite simple, as it all comes down to the confrontation between an astronaut and artificial intelligence. But gradually, it becomes clear that the director is concerned with far more significant questions about humanity's place in the universe and its origin and about the possibility of someday reaching places currently beyond human reach.